Receivables and Payables Basics Problem 2. Garlic Inc. had a beginning balance of $2,200 in accounts receivable. The ending balance in accounts receivable is $2,800. During the period, Garlic recognized $42,000 of revenue on account. Garlic's Salaries Payable account has a beginning balance of $1,800 and ending balance of $1,100. Garlic recognized $36,400 of accrued salary expense. Compute and calculate the following. Net income, net cash flow from operating activities. The way this information is presented, it's a little weird. We're given the ending balance of accounts receivable. We're given the amount of accounts receivable um, recognized on account of revenue during the, the period. We're given some balances in the salaries payable. We're given the amount of accrued salaries expense, these items. We just need to go through and determine the net income and the net cash from operating activities. Now, I will tell you that in doing these calculations, the net cash from operating activities, that one's going to be a little bit more challenging. Net income, as we know, net income, all we do, that's the income statement, we take the revenue minus the expenses. And we can just use the information given to us in this problem. So really, we're going through this and seeing if we determine any revenues and any expenses. We're told we have a beginning balance and accounts receivable. Does that go on revenue expenses? No. The ending balance and accounts receivable is 2800 That is in effect. During the period, Garlic recognized $42,000 of revenue on account. That is revenue. So that is revenue. So we do need to note that. So this is a revenue amount. Let's see if we have any other revenues. Garlic, garlic salaries payable account, the beginning balance of 1800 ending balance 1100 That's on the balance sheet. That's an asset. That's not on the income statement. And then garlic recognized 36400 of accrued salaries expense. So really, only two items here are revenues and expenses. We have the $42,000 of revenue on account during the period and $36,000 of accrued salary expense during the period. So our revenues, based on the information, $42,000. Our expenses, $36,400. That amount is going to equal $5,600. So our net income is $5,600. That was simple. That was simple. I mean, it's all about reading the information, understanding what kind of accounts you have here. Account receivable is an asset, does not go on the income statement. The um, the revenue, of course, goes in the income statement. Salaries payable. Receivables and payables go on the balance sheet. So that would not affect the income statement. Now, of course, sometimes you might have to use those numbers to do other things like calculate, but not for calculating net income, given the revenues, given the expenses, and we use those numbers. Now we got to do the net cash flow from operating activities. This is challenging because you look here and are we told anything about cash? Nope. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to back out the amount of cash received or paid in these transactions. Now we do, we're given a beginning and ending balance of accounts receivable. So you're, if you're given the beginning and ending balance of accounts, specifically current assets and current liabilities, which remember current assets and current liabilities, the change goes under operating activities with respect to the statement of cash flows. And remember, current assets have an inverse relationship, an inverse relationship. So if current assets go up we have a decrease in cash. And the idea is that you're using cash to purchase the current assets. If current liabilities go up, we have a direct relationship. The idea there is that you're borrowing. If a liability, current liability is going up, then you're borrowing and you're receiving cash. Well, going through our information, the $42,000 of revenue on account and the expense that may, that may be important to us, but remember that went on the income statement. This might still be important. We are told the beginning and ending balances of accounts receivable and salaries payable. Do we have any current assets? Yes. The current asset here is accounts receivable. And what we're going to do is we're going to take into account the beginning and ending balance and if there's any other changes that affect it. So we're told the beginning balance in accounts receivable is 2200. 2200. We're told the ending balance in accounts receivable, we're told, is 2800 
Now, let's see if anything else in there in the problem affects accounts receivable. We're told during the period, Garlic recognized $42,000 of revenue on account. We have to think about the accounting equation. The thing about the accounting equation, assets equals liabilities plus equity. We know that revenue went up by $42,000. So equity, we have an increase in equity of $42,000 because revenue increases owner's equity, right? Wire. What about what about corresponding or increase or decrease on liabilities? No, nothing there. There's no liabilities involved here. What about assets? So if there's an increase on one side, the right side of the equation, there has to be an increase on the left side, assets. Yes, we're going to record accounts receivable for $42,000. So that means that we're going to increase the accounts receivable by the revenue amount that was recorded on account, and that is an increase in $42,000. Increase in $42,000. Now, the way that we determine the amount or the change of cash, our beginning balance, the revenue on account increased account receivable, and then we're going to subtract away the ending balance. The idea there is by doing this calculation, we take a positive beginning balance plus the increase minus the ending balance. It tells us what the change, what the, the amount of cash collected, the cash collected. an account receivable. It tells us that. The cash collected. So that cash collected is going to be $41,400. And this is going to increase cash. Now, I told you earlier that there's a current asset, current liability, that, that relationship. What we're doing here is we're determining how much cash is, is collected. The idea is that by taking the $2,200 plus the $42,000 before considering the ending balance, in account receivable, there should have been 44,200, but there wasn't. There was 2,800. So how did we go from 44,200 down to 2,800? Hmm. Think about it. What what has to happen for the account balance to go down? Cash has to be collected. So if cash is collected, what happens to the amount of uh, cash on the statement of cash flows? It goes up. Cash collected means the company gets cash. Gets cash, and the amount is the 41,400. So that same idea, we're going to apply to any current liabilities we have in the problem, which we have accounts payable. So garlic salaries payable account, which think of that like accounts payable, it's a payable. We have to go through that. So specifically, we have current liability of salaries payable. And we start with the beginning balance. The beginning balance we're told is 1800 ending balance we're told is 1100 and we're also told that garlic recognized 36400 of accrued salary expense that's where the expenses have been incurred but not paid which means the employees have done the work but they have yet to be paid so we need to increase our salaries payable by the accrued Salary expense, I'll just put accrued salaries, and the amount is going to be plus 36400 So the idea is that if the ending balance is 1100 we subtract it away. And the reason why is because similar to the account receivable, 1800 plus 36400 which is going to be 38200 that's the balance before the ending balance, so there, that amount had to be paid. So we subtract those numbers, we get 37000 100. So this is actually cash paid in terms of the salaries that were owed. That's how it reduced from 38,200 to 1100. It was reduced by that amount. So we have our cash collected and our cash paid. We now can use these two numbers and we can determine the net cash flow from operating activities. Remember, these are both current assets and current liabilities are current assets, current liabilities. So that's why they go under the net cash flow from operating activities. And simply, what we're going to do is we're going to just take the cash collected amount, which is 41400 and we're going to subtract away the cash paid, which is 37100 and we're going to get a $4,300 net cash flow from operating activities.